Hello and welcome to this new video featuring retro networking using actual hardware. This is a follow up of the video that I did in VirtualBox, but here we're going to be using actual hardware. Ranging from this 286 running MS-DOS to this 486 running Windows 3.11, all the way up to this Pentium 2 running Windows 98. We'll go over the networking hardware equipment that you will need, the networking cards, the connectors, and the cables. And we'll create our own little private Microsoft-based network using Windows 98, Windows 3.11, and MS-DOS, hooking all of these three machines together and making sure that they can exchange files in an easy way. So let's start with the networking equipment. We'll be needing three networking cards and all networking cards have a B and C connector as I'm gonna be creating a 10 base two network. All of the network cards are ISA of course because we will put them in these retro PCs. To create the network we need some coaxial cable. We need three B and C T connectors and two cable end terminators. Now, in order to create a network, we cannot attach the cable directly to the network card, but we need to use this BNC-T connector that we put on the networking card. We also need to make sure that the network is properly terminated. So at the edge of the network, we always need to have a BNC cable and terminator plug. So on the second networking card here, we attach the T connector, we attach the cable, and where the network ends, we attach a terminator. In our case, we will have three computers in the network, so three networking cards. So the way we hook them up is we attach a BNC T connector on every network interface card, and the middle one just has the two cables connected, as we only need to terminate the edge network, obviously. Now I've got three networking cards here, three ISA networking cards, and this one only has the BNC connector. Other networking cards might have both the BNC as well as an RJ45 connector for 10 base T networks. Notice that these two cards are basically the same, only the one doesn't have the Ethernet port mounted. This is a network card based on the Realtek chipset. This one has both the BNC connector as well as the RJ45 10 base T connector. Just a note on the edge terminators. BNC 10 base 2 base networks use a 50 ohm resistor to terminate the network. There are also 75 ohm cable end terminators, which are mostly used for video, and these will not work for these 10 base 2 networks. So make sure you have the proper terminator installed. So let's take a quick look on the machines that will be participating on the network. The first being my 286AT running MS-DOS. So this computer has been featured in two other recent videos and I will be adding the network capabilities here. So this is a very standard 286 machine. It's, it's only got one megabyte so we can only run MS-DOS. And I've decided to install this UK022 based networking card. It's NE2000 compatible, it has good driver support, and it should be a breeze to set up. So we'll just put it in an ISA slot and then we can move on to the 486. Now, this 486 is my poor man's 486 project. It's a very low power 486 running Windows 3.11, which is encased in this kind of Frankenstein monster of a case. I decided to use all different color palettes in this build. So we've got the white CD-ROM, we have the brownish five and a quarter inch floppy drive, we have the black GoTech, the white disk drive, and the yellowed browned case. So what can I say, I'm a sucker for these kind of computers. Now, as this is a 486 machine, this should have no issues running Windows 3.11. Inside, we see the Intel DX33486 CPU, a very low-end Trident video card, and an IDE controller. So that's basically it. And it has four megabytes of RAM installed. The network card we'll be using here it has the same chipset. This also has an Ethernet port, but we're not gonna be using that. 
I've picked this networking card because it has excellent driver support. It's NE2000 compatible. And when searching for a networking card, it's important to have something which is well supported, which has drivers available and diagnostics utilities in order to set IRQs and IOs and memory addresses, and also the ability to test the card from within the diagnostics. And finally, moving to our Windows 98 build. So this one is a more modern machine. It has an ATX case. This is running an Intel Celeron at 300 megahertz and it's running Windows 98 second edition. My apologies for the Windows 95 box. I don't have a Windows 98 box. If somebody is willing to ship one to me, I would be happy to exchange it for this Windows 95 box, which I have two of. So I would kindly accept any offers in that respect. Now I've added the Windows 98 build because this machine has USB ports and that's very interesting because if we can hook up USB thumb drives onto this drive and share that onto the network, it would be very convenient for older PCs that don't have USB to get access to that data just by plugging them into the network. So for the networking card here, I'm going to be using this Realtek based 16-bit ISA networking card, which also has the BNC connector and the Ethernet connector. We're going to be putting it in this ISA slot here because I didn't have a PCI based networking card with a BNC connector. Now it's time to put all three machines here on my desk so that I can easily work on them so that we can fire them up. But first we'll put our networking cables in place. So we'll just add the T connector here, plug in our coaxial cable, and terminate our network with this 50 ohm terminator. And here's how our little network looks from the back. We have the 286 here, which terminates the network on one end. We have the coaxial cable running all the way to the 486. Another cable going from the 486 onto the Windows 98 base machine, where again the network is terminated. So time to fire everything up and make sure that the operating systems are loaded so that we can take a look at the network configuration that we need to do. Let's take a look at the software side of things, starting with MS-DOS. We'll start by looking at what's on the driver disk of the networking card, and this will typically be a folder structure like this. This one has a diagnostics folder which contains a setup program allowing you to inspect the various aspects of this networking card. So it has already detected the networking card. And when we enter here, we get a list of options. We can do an auto configuration or we can set the configuration manually. In this case, it's set up to use IO address 300 and IRQ3. And it also allows you to specify the adapter mode, the transceiver, a boot ROM address if you have a boot ROM chip installed. This setup program also allows you to test the network adapter. So it will do IO tests, RAM tests, it will do an internal loopback as well as an external loopback test, allowing you to test the physical wiring of your network. Here it will be sending packets. And if you have a different machine with the same network card, you can actually see both the transmission count and the receive count incrementing. But I'm going to be changing the configuration of this network card because I want to use the IRQ10 because I still need to install a uh, sound card onto this machine and I want to make use of all the I.O. ports. So IRQ10 should be a relatively safe IRQ for a networking card. We'll do the test again to just to make sure that there aren't any conflicts and everything seems to work fine. On the 286, we'll be installing the Microsoft Network Client 3.0, which is distributed on two three and a half inch disks. So we're gonna launch the setup program on this computer. Hit enter to start the installation. Choose an installation path. Hit enter on this prompt. Select a username, which is actually a computer name for this computer in the network. I'm going to be using 286AT. 
And then we can look at the various network settings. So we can look at the names. So as you can see, the username and computer name is the same. Here we have some redirector options. We're gonna be using the full redirector here. And as you can see, the setup has detected in any 2000 compatible networking card and it has installed the IPX compatible transport by default. Now we are going to be removing this because we are going to use the Microsoft NetBuoy protocol, which is fast and very easy to set up and very appropriate for these small local networks. So after that, the setup will copy some files and the installation should be complete and we can restart our computer. Notice how upon startup the NE2000 and this driver is loaded and the various uh, networking related tasks are started, prompting us to enter a password, create a password list file, and we should be good to go. Now, although this card work with the default NE2000 driver, it is often advised to use the vendor specific drivers and the networking client setup allows you to do just that. So here we can point to a, a disk that contains our uh, vendor specific drivers. So we will go ahead and install these. So instead of the NE2000, we now have the ISA NE series ethernet adapter. We're going to be selecting the Microsoft NetBuoy protocol for the basic file sharing functionality. And with the vendor specific driver, you can typically configure a lot more in terms of uh, networking settings. So we just need to insert our driver disk once more. It will copy over some files and then we should be good to go. Now, after a reboot, the only thing that you will notice is that a different uh, driver is being loaded. This is the NE2000 compatible Ethernet adapter and this driver version 4.04, .04, which came from the vendor disk. Now, a lot of these vendors use the same type of NE2000 compatible drivers, but this one does show the IRQ and the IO address of the networking card and allows you to configure the networking card a little bit more than the standard NE2000 driver. Whereas before it was using the Microsoft NE2000 and this driver version 2.0. When we installed Windows 3.11, it already detected our networking card when we decided to install the Microsoft network. So as we're going into the network setup right here, you can see that it has detected an NE2000 compatible networking card. It has also installed two protocols, the IPX SPX compatible transport with NetBIOS and the Microsoft NetBuoy. Although this approach definitely works and it does work on this network here. It is often advised to use the vendor specific drivers of the networking card. For example, here on my UK022 chipset, I have the Windows drivers here. And as you can see, it has detected it as an ISA NE series ethernet adapter. This time I'm only gonna be installing the NetBuoy protocol as this is the only protocol which is needed to do file sharing on this little network. Moving along to our Intel Celeron 333 MHz running Windows 98. So this one has been equipped with the Realtek plug and play card, which is automatically detected upon startup of Windows 98, which is a good thing. It will automatically configure the correct resources, uh, IO addresses, IRQs and stuff like that. So it was loading up the drivers from the Windows 98 CD and after a quick restart, the networking card should be available and we should be able to hook this computer up to the network. Now, a quick inspection of the networking properties in Windows 98 shows that we have three network interface cards here. Now, the two that you see here are actually the PCI-based networking card, which was in the computer before I installed this plug-and-play thing. So I'm just going to remove them manually here and make sure that we only have one network interface card defined here. I'm going to be using the NetBuoy protocol. I'm going to leave the TCP IP protocol here for now. We're not going to be using it because we are primarily focusing on file sharing using the NetBuoy protocol. So let's start by sharing some files right now. 
We'll start with Windows 3.11. So if we launch the file manager, select a folder, go to the disk menu and click the share as menu item, we'll get this window that allows us to share the directory, give it a comment, set up the access type, and when hitting OK, the folder will be shared on the network. The little hand icon on the folder indicates that this uh, folder has been shared and is accessible over the network. On Windows 98, we have a similar thing. So we open up the file explorer, select a folder, right click, sharing. We can share it, give it a name, give it a comment. Again, specify the access type and the folder will be shared across the network. Also here, a little hand will appear on the folder indicating that this is in fact a shared folder. So what about MS-DOS? Well, the MS-DOS machine isn't capable of sharing files itself. It is only capable of connecting to shared folders that other computers have made available in the network. So let's go back to our 286 right now. When we do the net view command, we can view all of the servers which are available in our workgroup. And we can actually see both the 486 and the Celeron here. We can also map a network share to a local drive number here by using the net use command. So here I'm going to be mapping drive letter E pointing to the data folder on the Celeron where I have some 286 utilities and games uh, copied over. And just like that, I can go to the games folder, select a game and launch it right off the network, which is a really cool thing, actually. The only thing you need to do is you need to hook up your 286 onto the network, map a network share, and you are good to go. Another thing worth noting is that the net command also has this graphical user interface, which will show you your current connection and will allow you to create new connections, browse the network, disconnect existing connections and stuff like that. One thing you do need to look out for when debugging your network configuration and you're working with uh, mapped drives that you are reconnecting is to ensure that these map drives actually work because when you reboot your computer the Microsoft network client will remap these existing connections making you give the impression that everything is okay while in fact it's perfectly possible that in this case the 486 DX33 isn't even present on the network as is the case for example here. So it makes you think that oh the D drive is connected to the 486 while in fact it is not. On our Windows 3.11 machine we can use the disk menu and select the connect network drive option where we will see our work group here with the two computers that are accessible over the network, which is the 486 and the Celeron. Again, note the MS-DOS machine isn't shown here because the MS-DOS machine is a client only and is not capable of sharing files or exposing itself on the network. So here I have added the D drive here, which points to the Celeron machine. And finally, moving to Windows 98, where we have the networking neighborhood, which is a place where all of the computers in our work group will be shown. So here we can see our 486DX33 and we can right click in order to create a drive mapping. So a local drive letter E will be created on this machine that points to our 486 shared data folder. So we've reached the end of this video on retro Windows based networking on actual hardware. I really hope you've enjoyed this video, enjoyed the machines that were shown here. And as always, if you liked it, please consider subscribing, giving a thumbs up or commenting on the videos. It would really help out and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye bye.